Do you think ever that there ever the, the prices are ever spread prices are ever skewed in line with the market trends? And I use, what I mean by that is adding to the offer price when clients are going long and lowering the bid when they're going short. Well, yes, I mean, this again is a, is a question of sort of how individual spread betting companies um, run their businesses and, 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 and run their pricing models. And my simple answer to that is that some companies uh, may skew their prices, other companies, uh, other companies won't. And, you know, my thinking about this, and I, I can't say for sure because I can't answer for all the companies out there, but if you are a large spread betting company with an awful lot of customers dealing in a particular product, then there's actually no real reason for you to skew your price particularly one way or another. Because even if the, mar the market is going up and you have mostly buyers, I mean, you're, you, you, there's... there's there's not a great deal of point of, of doing much of a skew because, I mean, sort of things change quite quickly and that, you know, the market sentiment can change quite quickly. You're getting people who are, who are trading just for a minute or two. You're getting people who are putting on longer term trades. So, you know, why not just keep everybody happy, keep your spread wrapped right around the market and, and, and don't put any skew on it. If you uh, don't have that kind of critical mass in terms of customers, then the, the, I can understand the tendency to want to skew the price. And it's perfectly reasonable, isn't it? I mean, you know, if you're a bookie and every one's putting money on a particular horse, then you cut the odds on it. And I just don't see there's any, there's any problem, I, you know, in, in my mind, that if you are seeing a, a lot of buyers in something, then, you know, you, you could skew your price slightly up to take account of that if people are still happy to pay for it. That's what a market maker does in a stock. Uh, you, re, you respond to the, the, the market supply and demand. And if you go too far, then of course people are going to come on and they might be able to R between you and someone else in an individual stock. Uh, or they might just say, well, you know, you're too high and start selling. Okay, so this is a statement. So, but there's still that awkward fact that the market maker is taking a position against the customer. And on a related point, the broker's profit is not transparent. It's hidden in the difference between the customer's price and the customer's liquidity provider's price. So comment on that. Yeah, I mean, the, you, there is an obvious... Uh, on the surface, a conflict of interest between uh, what a spread better is doing and what the spread better's customers are doing. And, you know, that comes about because in the first instance, the spread better is taking the opposite side of whatever the customer does. And so you could sort of argue in sort of straightforward, simplistic terms that the spread better would like the customer uh, to, to lose. Um, that's not so clear cut anymore when you consider how the spread betting company uh, is pays its tax because uh, under current legislation every time a customer loses money the spread better is seen as uh, as being a winner and yet there's an, always an element of hedging going on so that complicates the mix to some extent the the other thing which i've always felt about uh, the industry and this is going back to the, the 86 when i started in it is that there was very much a feeling that um, spread betters had to be whiter than white um, because they were seen as being outside of the mainstream, very much sneered upon uh, by, by stockbrokers, futures, but just about everyone. I mean, spread betters were considered to be, you know, beyond the pale. Uh, not only that, they were sort of eating everybody, they were eating everybody's lunch, which nobody really liked either. And ultimately, of course, these companies started offering their own spread betting services because they realised they couldn't beat them. But, that, you know, that aside, there was, a, there was a feeling that spread betters had to be whiter and white because of this very reason that they were considered in such low uh, esteem, but also that they were um, uh, acting against their customers' best interests because they were sort of taking the other side of things. Now, um, that's probably changed to some extent, but the very fact that you do have such competition within the industry, uh, you have so many providers out there for a start, uh, spreads have been cut to the bone, there's transparency. Um, you know, really, I, I think a lot of those things you just have to sort of forget about as a customer. Um, I mean, you, okay, you, you might have a feeling of grievance, you might see that sort of something is oddly priced and uh, you, you might not like it, uh, in which case you can sort of always make, make a call and find out what's going on. Uh, and hopefully you might get a, you know, a sensible response. But, but in the main, I mean, certainly in my experience is as a customer of a few spread betting companies, um, I haven't really found any reason to sort of be too upset in the pricing. 
ultimately, if you don't like the pricing, you don't, you don't you, go into it. If you don't like the pricing, yes, you don't deal. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I would say to that, uh, the, the only kind of slight thing, of course, is once you've got a position open, uh, you could argue that the, the, the spread better is making it uh, disadvantageous for you to come out. So it's deliberately offering um, a worse price for you to come out. Now, that, that's a little bit of a paranoia scenario because, you know, it's very rare that you're going to take, that the spread betting company is taking on just one person. And uh, even if, you, if that person had a substantial position in something, there are ways of, of working an order, of coming to an accommodation. Uh, where you know both sides, both parties can be happy with the ultimate closing price. Okay. But spread betting providers take the other side of traders. Isn't there a conflict of interest there? Well, yes. I mean, the fact that spread betters do take the opposite side for, to their customers that that there there is a con there is a conflict of interest to some extent. But you know, it, I think that's very much that's just on on the face of it. I mean, if you think about the underlying liquidity of markets, the transparency of the pricing. I mean, you know, we we can get live prices for free from multiple sources now. Um, you know, we don't. You know, it used to be sort of 30 years ago. If you wanted to get um, live prices of any type, you had to pay 30 grand a year. This is going back to the 80s and early 90s. You had to pay 30 grand a year to get a Reuters or a Comstock or a Bloomberg in. I mean, that just wasn't going to happen. You relied very much on the honesty of the spread better to tell you where the underlying market was and what their price was. And, you know, remember that, that that's when the days when prices did get skewed. And that was in the days when a spread on the FTSE was, was 10 points. You know, things have changed. Things have moved on. But I think for all those reasons, I think we, you know, we, again, as, as a, talking as a customer, we should probably not get so het up about, um, you know, the, the, the bookies being on the, uh, you know, having a conflict of interest, being on the other side. They're providing a service. They're providing a method of us getting exposure to a particular market. And I think that's the way to think about it. And I'm not talking as an industry spokesman here. I'm not working in the industry. I work, you know, I do bits and pieces, a bit of a prostitute for the industry, if you like, but not, in the, you know, I'm, I'm talking more as a customer. And just saying, you know, really, you know, let, let's just see what they are doing. They're providing a, a service, an easy and relatively cheap, if not a cheap way of getting, uh, of, of get, taking positions in leveraged markets. I mean, you know, we touched on futures markets. Now, if you, if you, want, if you want to open up a futures account, if you want to go to a broker and say, well, look, actually, I, I, I don't, that's spread betting, that, 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 that's very, very cheap and nasty. I, want, I you know, I'm a big boy. I want to open up a, a, a futures trading account. You'll have to, you'll have to lodge something like twenty thousand pounds or twenty thousand dollars even to get started, and the kind of margins that are required. These are, are uh, margins as required by the, the, the various exchanges. So you know, it's an expensive business. Uh, getting involved in, in, in that kind of futures leverage. And I think, you know, look at spread betting. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, you could argue that maybe it shouldn't be as cheap and that, that the margins shouldn't be as low as they are. But, OK, that's what they are. Um, that's the risk that the spread betters take. That's the risk that you take as a customer. You go in with your eyes open and just use it for what it is. And that's a way, it's a service.